Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. You know, it feels corny to even say, but it's so true. Life, life does find a way. And if you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you're in the seats with once more, as always. My name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of entertainment industry professionals, and we pick their brain about current, uh, current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more in a light and in a conversational fashion. And you know, if you like how we do things around here, uh, I'm going to assume that you do, because let's face it, you're listening right now. Uh, subscribe, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, give us a five-star rating on your podcast provider of choice. We're available pretty much everywhere, places like Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google, and plus we archive every single one of our episodes over at our In The Seeds YouTube channel, so if you can give us a like and subscribe there as well, we would absolutely appreciate it. Also, don't hesitate to check us out on the social media. We're on the Facebook, we're on the Twitter, we're on the Instagram, we're on the TikTok, we're on the Letterboxd, and I even think we're on the Tumblr for all sorts of fun updates. And finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, InTheSeats.ca for all the latest and greatest from the world of film, television, basically the moving image at large. Because guess what? If we love to watch it and write about it and talk about it, we love it even more when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So please, do us that kindness and pay us a visit. On this episode, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, we got a fun one. It is coming out in theaters this uh, Friday and... uh, well, it's a funny one. It's hilarious. It's Biosphere. It had its premiere over at TIFF, and now it's going to be uh, available in theaters. I'm not quite sure if it's going to be playing up here in Canada, but I know in the States it is getting a decent little run. Uh, and it's from director Mel Eisen, but it's written, co-written by Mark Duplass and starring Sterling K. Brown and Mark Duplass. And it puts us into the not-too-distant future. It uh, tells us the story of two men, the last two men on Earth, who have to adapt and evolve in order to uh, to save the human race. And uh, it's sweet, it's heartfelt, it's funny. It really puts so many of our preconceived notions that we've grown up with about uh, intimacy and just human beings and just people being people generally are to, to put some on its ear and really... It, it's the it's it's rare to see a film that's deep and funny, uh, but this is that and then some. And we had the unique pleasure of getting us a few minutes with the one and only Mark Duplass and and Sterling K. Brown to talk about uh, the film and just sort of uh, you know the unique experience of uh, basically just being two guys carrying a movie for an hour and forty six minutes, which is pretty much what they're doing here. This is a a unique, unique piece of cinema that I encourage so many of you to to go see. Like I said, it's fun, it's sweet, but it's deep, and it's actually saying something all at the same time, which uh, at the end of the day is kind of what cinema is all about. But uh, go see Biosphere when it opens this Friday, July 7th at a theater near you, Uh, especially if you're in the States, because that's where it is. I'm not sure where we're TBD up here on Canada. But uh, first, enjoy our talk with uh, Sterling K. Brown and the one and only Mark Duplass, because between you and me, it's a darn good one. Uh, Mark Sterling, obviously, first off, guys, just thank you so much for the time today. I mean, congrats on the film, man. I thought it was fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, bro. I appreciate that. Now, I mean, Mark, I guess my first question is for you. Like, obviously, like, when this idea kind of comes to your head, like, can you write for Sterling or do you just have to write it and hope you get somebody who's willing to sort of go on this ride with you? That's a, a great question. Now, I came up with this idea about five years ago, um, and I, I couldn't get it. In fact, I remember sending 20 pages of it to Mel and, and saying, I don't think there's a movie here. Can you help me fix this? Um, and she was the one who really resurrected it and found it. And in that process, we identified Sterling immediately as like, this is the one we want. And I'm not just saying that this is, you know, and so you get attached. And so we started writing and started thinking, oh my God, what are we gonna do if we don't get him? So we sent him the offer and we promised each other, we're just gonna have to wait patiently. And he called us the next morning and he said, I'm gonna do it. So he made it real easy. <laughs> <laughs> it, was easy it was easy to say yes to. It was challenging, it was fun. Uh, it was unlike Randall Pearson, which is always something that I'm looking forward to because there's one thing when people yell your name and they say Sterling and another thing when they say Randall. Yep. Um, so <laughs> Sterling is always much more appreciated. And it was just, I don't know, artistry is act, activism, et cetera. There's, for the people in my family, 
that I've grown up with who are LGBTQ, who've had to deny any part of themselves as a way of fitting in with society at large. I was like, you know what, just just do you. Like, and, and this movie is sort of like that sort of speech is like, you know, if you do you, you will be accepted as you are. And hopefully that is the way that society, the world is moving in that direction. Amen. Yeah. And if you're going to do it, do it inside of a buddy comedy that also kind of feels like Dumb and Dumber. There you go. That's the mix. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I got to ask Sterling because, I mean, obviously there's some heady, there's some philosophical stuff going on throughout the film. But how important is it to have sort of this unequivocal moment of joy where you two are basically dancing around the kitchen in a script like this? It is so much. I mean, like. It's not a medicine movie like 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 Mark says, like there's dumb people doing dumb things and just enjoying each other's company. And I think that if that spirit is infused in the film and is absorbed by our audience, then whatever message comes from it is a byproduct of the fun that these two dudes are having. No, I mean, Mark, I have to ask about uh, particularly Zeus and the music like was it were they always in your mind because they're such a good counterpoint to the material? Yeah, we really got to give that up to to Mel, you know, again, you know, Mel, Mel is, I think, the the true beating heart of this movie as co-writer and, and director. She's been running our company for years, you know, and we started talking about, you know, what's a song that's going to, to feel iconic that some people will know, but they kind of recognize, but yeah. they're not sure where it comes from. It feels like it comes from a certain time and place. Sterling and I are both born in the same yeah. year, you know, where Zeus would have been kind of seminal for these guys, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm glad you sparked to that. No, I mean, just to start putting a bow on this, I got to ask, because I can imagine as this done the festival run and people have seen it, there are theories on the green dot. Do you guys have a theory on what the, what the green dot is? I got a lot of theories on the green dot and I love keeping them to myself. I, I like, I like to speculate and we're, and most importantly, I'm, a, I'm afraid that my real theory might just be dumb and disappointing. To people. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's funny you mentioned about, uh, you know, showing this at festivals and everything. What's so strange about this movie, we showed this movie once at Toronto yeah. and then we shut it down completely. Cause really? Okay. We realized that the less people know about this movie going in, the more they enjoy it. So yeah. really only a few hundred people have seen this movie so far. It's about to be released in the world. Like this, this egg's just about to crack open. So hell man, I'm in Toronto and I couldn't even get a damn ticket for that. <laughs> I think for me, the green dot is the same thing as uh as the notepad and the story of the bowling ball that it's representative of possibility of magic. So what it literally is, I don't know. But what it represents is the unexpected is always possible. That's what it represents to me. Now, I'm curious. Obviously, you guys work so exceptionally well together. And I mean, Mark, I think I love your analogy of just calling this like a smarter dumb and dumber. Do you see a dumb and dumber too in your future? Like, do you, like I could see this ah! doing a lot of stuff. You know, it's so funny. I mean, we, a lot, that has been talked about from the very small handful of people who, who have seen the film. And another thing that keeps coming up is they're like well when are you and sterling gonna go take this thing on the stage in new york they're like, what they're like it's the perfect play <laughs> and i was like you so we're gonna do this every night is, this, is that what's gonna happen <laughs> okay all right so, <laughs> i don't listen i don't <laughs> know, i don't know what i can do in terms of every night but i could work with this guy again in a heartbeat um so if there's ever an opportunity for us to work on something like Always keep your boy in mind because it was an absolute pleasure. Pleasure. Hey, if, if Biosphere helps you guys go for your EGOT, I'm all for it. But I mean, honestly, <laughs> guys, seriously, this, this was such a hell of a piece of work. It was funny, but I mean, it was insightful and sweet all at the same time, man. It's a beautiful piece of cinema. But I mean, to you both, just congrats on the work and thank you so much for the time today. Thank you so Thanks much. A lot, Appreciate Dave. the heart. Take it easy, right. bro. And don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental, or purchasing needs this summer, as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and Blu-ray needs. <laughs>